What you got to do is be a, aversive to the standard stupidities. You just keep those out. You don't have to be smart. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. Right. Why do a couple of guys in a little place in Omaha do so much better than all these powerful minds and great institutions? And I said, well, I think Warren and I know the edge of our competency better than other people do. And that's humility in the umbrella sense. And that is a very important thing to know. I say over and over again, it's not a competency if you don't know the edge of it. You are a disaster if you don't know the edge of your own competency. There's no magic to it. You just have to stay away from doing something foolish. It's a little like investing. You know, you don't have to do anything very smart. You just have to avoid doing things that are ungodly dumb when looked at about a year later. And, you know, airlines and that sort of thing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's the trick. It, 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 is not, it is not some great crystal ball game where you look into the future and see all these things that other people can't possibly see. I mean, what's complicated about Coca-Cola or Gillette or Wells Fargo, for that matter? I have a friend whose grandmother used to say, but she couldn't understand why people got into envy jealousy because it was the only one of the sins that you could never possibly have any fun at. But uh, generally speaking on Wall Street, I think a lot of people have had the wrong kind of grandmothers. I don't think it's wise to have an ambition to be president of the United States or a billionaire or something like that because the odds are too much against you. Much better to aim low. I did not intend to get rich. I wanted to get independent. I just overshot. We all know people who are out married, but I mean, their spouses are so much better. Think what a good decision that was for them. <laughs> and what a lucky decision, way more important than money. A lot of them did it when they were young, just they stumbled into it. Now, you don't have to stumble into it. You can be very careful. A lot of people are wearing signs, danger, danger, do not touch. And people just charge right ahead. That's a mistake. Well, you can laugh, but it's still a horrible mistake. Here's an apocryphal story that is very instructive. A young man comes to visit Mozart. And he says, Mozart, he says, I want to write symphonies. And Mozart says, how old are you? And the man says, I'm 23. And Mozart says, you're too young to write symphonies. And he says, but Mozart, he says, you were writing symphonies when you were 10 years old. Mozart says, yes, but I wasn't asking other people how to do it. <laughs> now there's another Mozart story. Here's the greatest musical talent maybe that ever lived. <laughs> and what was his life like? Well, he was bitterly unhappy and he died young. That's the life of Mozart. What the hell did Mozart do to screw it up? He did two things that are guaranteed to create a lot of misery. He overspent his income scrupulously. That's number one. That is really stupid. And the other thing was he was full of jealousies and resentments. If you'll spend, overspend your income and be full of jealousy and resentments, you can have a lousy, unhappy life and die young. All you've got to do is learn from Mozart. You can also learn from that young man who was asking Mozart how to write symphony. The truth of the matter is that not everybody can learn everything. Some people are way the hell better. And of course, no matter how hard you try, there's always some guy that cheats more, some guy or gal. In my attitude, so what? Do it. Does any of us need to be the very top of the whole world? It's ridiculous. Another thing that people do that I care about is amazing is they build these enormous mausoleums. I think they figure they want people to walk by that mausoleum and say, gosh, I wish I were in there. <laughs> anyway, you can see we've had some fun as we go along. And it's worked so well, but if you actually figure out how many decisions were made in the history of the Daily Journal Corporation or the history of Berkshire Hathaway, it wasn't very many per year that were meaningful. It's a game of being there all the time and recognizing the rare opportunity when it comes and recognizing that a normal human allotment is to not have very many. Now, there's a very confident bunch of people who sell securities, who act as though they've got an endless supply of wonderful opportunities. But those people are the equivalent of the racetrack tout. They're not even respectable. It's not a good way to live your life to pretend to know a lot of stuff you don't know and pretend to furnish you a lot of opportunities you're not furnishing. My advice to you is avoid those people. 
but not if you're running a stock brokerage firm. You need them, but it's not the right way to rank make money and controlling the costs and living simply. And that was the secret, how much money? Warren and I had tiny little bits of money. We always underspent our incomes and we invested and we, well, you know, if you live long enough, you end up rich. It's not very complicated. Now there is a part of life, which is how do you scramble out of your mistakes without them costing too much? And we've done some of that too. If you look at Berkshire Hathaway, think of its founding businesses, a doomed department store, a doomed New England textile company, a doomed trading stamp company. Out of that came Berkshire Hathaway. Now we handled those losing hands pretty well and we bought into them very cheaply. But of course the success came from changing our ways and getting into the better businesses. It isn't that we were so good at doing things that were difficult. We were good at avoiding things that were difficult, finding things that are easy. By the way, when we bought the Daily Journal, that was easy. And what we're doing now in this software business is difficult. But due to the accident of these good associations and the fact that these old colleagues have lived so long, we're doing pretty well in the new business. It has potential and it's fun to do. How many declining newspapers have hundreds of millions of marketable securities lying around and a new business with some promise? We're like the last of the Mohegans. It's not my nature when you get little surprises as a result of human nature to spend much time feeling betrayed. I'm always want to just put my head down and adjust. So I don't allow myself to spend much time ever with any feelings of betrayal. So you're asking the wrong person because if I, if some flickering idea like that came to me, I'd get rid of it quickly. I don't like any feeling of being victimized. I think that's a counterproductive way to think as a human being. I am not a victim, I'm a survivor. And in terms of uh, humility, I've frequently said that when they passed that out, I didn't get my full share. And that was a serious problem when I was young. And I only cured it partly by becoming very rich. And, <laughs> and generous. It takes both to overcome a defect like that. So the young people in the room, don't copy this if you're not willing to pay the price. But if humility means that you know the edge of your own competence, yes. and you aren't arrogantly stepping over the boundary, I'm very good at that. But within my area of competency, my best friend would not adore me for my humility. Warren frequently says, I'd rather deal with a guy with an IQ of 130 who thinks it's 125 than a guy with an IQ of 180 that thinks it's 200. That, that, that second guy will kill you. It's amazing how if you just get up every morning and keep plugging, have some discipline, keep learning, and it's amazing how it works out okay. Real opportunities that come to you are few. It's a very fortunate life that is just bathed in opportunity all the way. Most people just get a few times when they can make a huge difference by seizing a huge activity. When you find one, my dear grandchildren, you can clearly recognize it. Seize it boldly and don't do it small. Assume that your really major opportunities in life are gonna be few. And when you get a Lollapalooza, for God's sakes, don't hang by like a timid little rabbit. Don't hang back. They aren't that many of the really big good ones. If you take the whole history of Berkshire Hathaway, if you take out the 20 best tr transactions, our record is a joke. Well, 20 best transactions over 40 some years, that's one every two years. And we work at it all the time. Life is not just bathing you in unlimited opportunities even if you work at being able to find them and seize them. Well, luckily I got at a very early age, the idea that the safest way to try and get what you want is to try and deserve what you want. It's such a simple idea. It's the golden rule, so to speak. You, you want to deliver to the world what you would buy if you were on the other end. There is no ethos, in my opinion, that is better for any lawyer or any other person to have. By and large, the people who've had this ethos uh, win in life, and they don't win just money, just honors and emoluments. They win the respect, the deserved trust of the people they deal with. And there is huge pleasure in life to be obtained 
from getting deserved trust. And so, and the way to get it is to deliver what you'd want to buy if the circumstances were reversed. Generally speaking, envy, resentment, revenge, and self-pity are disastrous modes of thoughts. Self-pity gets pretty close to paranoia, and paranoia is one of the very hardest things to reverse. You do not want to drift into self-pity. I have a friend who carried a big stack of Lennon cards, about this thick, and when somebody would make a comment that reflected self-pity, he would take out one of the cards, take the top one off the stack, and hand it to the person. And the card said, your story has touched my heart. Never have I heard of anyone with as many misfortunes as you. Well, you can say that's waggery, but I suggest that every time you find you're drifting into self-pity, I don't care what the cause, your child can be dying of cancer. Self-pity is not going to improve the situation. Just give yourself one of those cards. It's a ridiculous way to behave. And when you avoid it, you get a great advantage over everybody else, almost everybody else, because self-pity is a standard condition. And yet you can train yourself out of it. And of course, the self-serving bias, you want to get out of yourself. Thinking that what's good for you is good for the wider civilization and rationalizing all these rid ridiculous conclusions based on these, this subconscious tendency to serve oneself is a, it's, a, it's a terribly inaccurate way to think. And, and of course you want to drive that out of yourself because you want to be wise, not foolish. You also have to allow for the self-serving bias of everybody else because most people are not going to remove it all that successfully, the human condition being what it is. If you don't allow for self-serving bias in your conduct, again, you're a fool. You just aren't competent. I watched the brilliant Harvard Law Review trained general counsel of Solomon lose his career. And what he did was when the CEO w was aware that some underling had done something wrong, the general counsel said, gee, we don't have any legal duty to report this, but I think it's what you, we should do. It's our moral duty. And the general counsel was totally correct. But of course it didn't work. It was a very unpleasant thing for the CEO to do and he put it off and put it off and put it off. And in due course, why the thing eroded into a major scandal and down went the CEO and the general counsel with him. The correct answer in situations like that was given by Ben Franklin. He says, if you would persuade, appeal to interest, not to reason. The self-serving bias is so extreme. If the general counsel said, look, this is going to erupt in something that will destroy you, take away your money, take away your status, it's a perfect disaster, it would have worked. You want to appeal to interest.